All right, so uh, this first thing is just some background on how to make almost anything. Started by this dude called Neil Gershenfeld, who founded the Fab Lab movement. And uh, as was pointed out before, he started this thing called Fab Academy, which is basically like a series of classes that people around the world can take to learn how to make almost anything. But for me, I learned how to break almost anything, but that's besides the point. Um, and I was I actually had the opportunity to take it in person with Neil. So if you go to this site, you can find all of the resources that he shared to learn all of these different making techniques. Uh, if you're interested in, in any of them, I highly recommend it. He's kind of like a walking encyclopedia of how to build things. Um, and as part of this course, we are all expected to build a website to document our journey. So if you go to people, you will be able to find like uh, everyone's work. Um, and in particular, here's mine, and here's the stuff that I built over the weeks. Um, and for the purpose of this presentation today, I decided to combine all of my most interesting learnings into a, a highlights reel. Oh yeah, I have this thing as well, like who am I, firstly? <laughs> I'm Olivia, and my last name rhymes with Meow. <laughs> it's just Xiao, and I like cats. Uh, I was previously a startup founder. I, I ran a wearable tech startup in Singapore. I worked with DBS to create those payment uh, wearable things. Uh, I was an engineer, a UX consultant, and I worked in um, HCI research. So my work is here. But the main point of today is to talk about the curious and techy materials cat. <laughs> a very forceful uh, <laughs> acronym. <laughs> Um, materials that I played with during this course of how to make almost anything. Um, so the, the whole thing is actually broken down into a couple sub projects. If the internet here is good enough to play this video, oh, uh, I 3D printed holography. Um, I created these NFC hollow cats. Um, I made a shape shifting wire flower and also um, a Martian marigold. Oh, and a, a Starry Night PCB board. So I'll just talk about some of these things. And if you have any questions, you can stop me anytime. I uh, am very, very keen on color changing, shape changing, <laughs> and things that can use tech in creative ways. So, yes. Did you do the uh, origami explains in the when you do the electrical impulses? No, that was yeah. like DIT, I think, years ago. But I did play with Night Nightingale Wire as well. Um, so I was very curious what would happen if we 3D print on CDs and basically what happens is the 3D filament melts into the tiny little grooves of a CD and as the CD has this rainbow colors, um, they're not actually pigments but structural color which means that it reflects light in a certain way that produces those colors and that color can actually be transferred to 3D prints in the, those microstructures. So when you remove the 3D print from a, a CD, it actually performs as a mold and the color transfers, even though there's no like transfer of filament. So it's, it's very cool. You can also do that with diffraction grates, which is this thin film that you sometimes see in um, window covers, I don't know, to make like rainbow effects. So it almost looks like a film, but actually it's just a very smooth um, to the touch surface that is that is uh, producing these rainbow effects. Very, very cool and very, uh, yeah, you can see it's actually much better than a conventional 3D print, like even on a glass surface, it looks much more smooth than that. It also works if you use a 3D pen on, on the CD directly, you produce effects like that. Uh, so that was my first experiment in 3D printing. How did you remove the silver layer of the CD? Oh, I use a masking tape, a duct tape. I, yeah, it's like waxing. So it's not really hologram, right? Uh, yeah, it's not really. It's like holographic in the sense of um, it has light shifting properties. Yeah. Um, this one as well is not really a hologram, but what I did was I I took a a, a reference of Pushin and <laughs> um made a uh three D object that I milled out in the shop bot and created these molds uh, and then reverse filled it with umu, like a kind of silicon mold. And I filled it with, this is dry stone, I believe, but I also played with resin. 
Um, so I was able to create all of these, a family of cats. Why won't you play? No. Okay, anyways, um, I, I uh, created these resin cats and at the back of it, I created a PCB which has an antenna on it. And on my website, I also have a, a JavaScript calculator for how to create a, an antenna of a certain frequency to pick up the frequencies coming from your smartphone, which you know you might use for Google Pay or uh, to open a door. So the antenna picks up the energy that's emitted from your phone's NFC signal and creates a uh, like a circuit that is active. Uh, what what's the light on? Is it LED or what's the is, sorry? What's going? Oh, it's an LED. Yes. Uh, I'm very sad that my videos aren't playing, but basically, um, there's an LED on the opposite side of this, and the antenna is tuned to pick up the frequency of uh, the smartphone, which is like thirteen fifty six megahertz. Um, and oh no, they're not all not playing. I'm really sad. Okay, if you go to my website, you'll see it. <laughs> so when the phone yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, here you can see it blinking. Uh, it's a very therapeutic kind of process because uh, when you when you glaze the cat almost, you can you can see it becoming more and more shiny. Originally, the milling machine creates a <laughs> kind of striped effect, but when you pour resin over the top of the cat, then it becomes very shiny, and the the blinking effect comes through very well. Where did you get access for the shop? Or in Singapore, you did it, or like where? I I did it in America. Yeah, but I hope. It is accessible in Singapore to find a, find a maker space or something. Uh, I also made a um, metal cat, and this doesn't have an antenna, but <laughs> but uh, using a an alloy uh, Rodo 128, I think, which is like a hobbyist uh, uh, metal that can be melted at a lower temperature. Is a link due to the cellular signals or to the NFC function of the book? It is due to the NFC, it's like seeping. So um, you can see it blinking. If you put it like in front of an MRT gantry, you'll see it blinking faster, for instance. But I thought you need something to tell the phone to turn on the NFC to oh, the com start the communication. There are some phones, I think like the Apple phone, you need to have that handshake. So then it wouldn't work because there's no chip. But uh, for like other things, simple things like the door, um, access point or the Google Pay on Android phone still work. I did the same thing with a, a full PCB. Um, and this one is Starry Night where the clouds are the antennas. And again, it's tuned to receive uh, 1356 megahertz. Yeah. Um, and, and all of this was as part of the course. So the first few was like molding and casting, learning 3D printing, learning 3D scanning. Mm -hmm. Uh, learning how to use the uh, PCB milling machine, stuff like that. And then I was very curious about shape changing, so I decided to play with nitinol, uh, which is the kind of metal that you can train at a high temperature to form a certain shape. So what you need to do is you force it to stay in a shape, you put it in an oven at 500 degrees Celsius for like five minutes, and then when you take it out, you can like twist it in any new shape, but when you heat it again, it will collapse back into a shape that you have trained it to be. I tried to make a very complex like rose shape, and it, it ended up being very like <laughs> weak because there was just too many constraints that it couldn't like remember how to get back into that very difficult shape. So my my difficulty was how can we make a beautiful looking flower using this metal? I'm sorry? Shape memory. Maybe. Yeah, shape memory alloy. There's actually a, a few kinds of shape memory uh, materials. There's also like a uh, fishing line. I think it's called, it's like a muscle wire, but that one just shrinks and expands when you expose it to the heat, I believe. Um, this one, you can actually get it to form a certain shape. I'm really sorry about what, all my videos. What's the most complex shape you have seen? Uh, I think, I believe doctors use it to form, to go inside the heart and then like it forms a coil. Oh no, uh, something like a stent, but that's medical grade. I, I don't really know how they make it because I learned from this process that it's extremely difficult to um, 
as you can see, train it to, to form a shape that is very constrained. Like it doesn't remember which side it should go over which, and it doesn't have enough uh, force to go back into some shapes. So that was my challenge. How can we make this flower shape? And I, I, I figured out how to make these simple petals. So you can see it um, when it is not heated up, it is in like this limp position. And then when you put heat on it, which I did with the uh, power supply, um, then it becomes uh, a blooming flower. And I think this is like a, a method that's not that common as well, because most people just expose it to heat using a heat gun or a hair dryer. So I using this electrical approach, it's more controlled. You can decide how much heat and when and like some PWM stuff to, to make it look like more staged. So when you remove the heat, does it go back to this? That's, yeah, that, that's very interesting. So it actually goes, I'll show you a video later if my if the internet is good. Um, it goes back into a new position that is not really expected. Sometimes it defies gravity and I don't really understand why. So <laughs> you, you apply the heat, it forms a shape and then you take off the heat, it like goes upwards. I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> um, and to, to supply the heat to the flower, I created a custom PCB bar with a ESP32 chip so that I could connect it to the internet and like make this flower be remotely triggered. Uh, here's me testing it with an oscilloscope to see uh, the signals passing through. No, I, I think this video won't play. How much carbon do you have to pass through the uh, Oh, um, I try as little current as possible. Uh, just changed. I, I think I have a video later of the exact numbers that I used. Um, but as you can see, so <coughs> here, this is when I turn off the power. It kind of like, yeah, it's super eerie. And I really liked it because it has this organic movement. And the, the cool thing about this is that it is uh, quiet. So, you know, those like kinetic mirrors, like pop, 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 pop. <laughs> and it's very annoying to have in front desks. So some, sometimes they want those kind of uh, effect in a, in a front desk, but it, it's disruptive. So now you can have flowers blooming on some kind of installation and, and have it be totally silent. Uh, yeah, and, and this is just, um, I was able to control the movement using a website because because of the ESP32. So building on from this, I wanted to make the flowers look more flower-like. As you can see, I put these pom-poms on because I wanted the movement to be more visible. It was very difficult to fill the gaps with uh, any kind of material because like now wire is difficult to solder onto things. It literally can't stick anything on it. Um, and because of the movement, you can't really, uh, you know, it, it, the whatever you put on it has to be able to stretch and shrink in such a way that it follows the wire without like completely dropping off. So I played with resin and I failed a lot. I tried to, uh, I'll just explain my process. Um, I tried to form these bubbles, like surface tension bubbles using resin and cure it in place so that it actually becomes like a petal. And no, should I try refreshing? Do you think? Mm. Okay. Listen to that. Oh, maybe it's actually my server. It's on local host. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay. So um these these petals have resin. In them, the outside is nitinol, and then I, I used it kind of like a like a bubble blower thing and filled it with resin. It was really really difficult to do because resin cures in exo oh. exothermic; it produces heat. And then when the nitinol wire receives heat, it wants to move. Oh. So, <laughs> so it was very difficult to make make that work. Um, but here you can see uh, the power supply, um, and here I'm like giving power to this wire flower and. The wire is then heating up, which allows me to heat up the resin. And within the resin, I put thermochromic pigment. So it like, you can see the color changing from the outside in. Uh, yeah, so this process was really, really difficult. And here's how I did it. I made these wire loops and 
uh, I had to kind of prevent it from shorting itself because night null is a live wire. Then I created this resin uh, uh, bubble, surface tension bubble thing. And as, as I mentioned before, it fails a lot because the night null will try to move and then it will break the bubble. So every time it's curing, it, it will try to like untangle itself. But eventually I got it to work and it applied a pigment on top of it. And here is a video of a single petal. Uh, yeah, so it's, I put a black pigment that turns transparent when there's heat and um, some other colors underneath it. So it's fixed at one amp and you need about 2.7 volts to, to make the petal move. And at this point, I figured out how to make the petal just like, like move in a very graceful way instead of just that EV movement, which is also nice, but just for this purpose, I wanted it to move in a controlled manner. And here's what the colors look like just heating up with a heat gun. Yeah. And with the, the board from before, uh, the, the movement, as you can see, is very eerie. This is in real time, so it's actually pretty fast. Thank you. That's a great compliment. <laughs> yeah. But, but, you know, some, some plants can change colors. Uh, I also made a full case using the diffraction grade method that I explained earlier, and this is the final thing. I didn't really explain this, but it was a, a touch um, sensor that you can use to activate the flower. Yeah, and that kind of concludes my highlights from how to make almost anything with these five projects. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, you can go and find her later after this. <laughs>